our life cycles. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Wanted to jump on and do a quick video on the loops or the cycles or the karma, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I go away from the term karma basically because there's no punishment. And so when we get into the idea of karma, you know, a lot of people want to say, oh, that's punishment. You're going to get what you deserve and blah, 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 instant karma. And, you know, there's none of that. Um, only here in our version of it, but on the other side, it, it doesn't exist. There's no punishment. There's no judgment. There's no karma. Um, the cycles of the past, of the path exist, right? So the cycles are the looping, right? Back to the original point of perception or conception or whatever you want to term it. Uh, we call it the set point. Because uh, that's your decision making point rather than the opposite of saying, you know, karma or punishment or what you deserve, right? Because everything is choice, right? And so we have choice on everything. From everything that we make a choice is a set point in our timeline, which we live from. Because whatever choice you make is what you're going to, your plant, your seeded plants, or your plant, your seeds that you plant. <laughs> And then from that, they evolve, right? Because every time you make a choice, that is your planting of the seed and you give energy to it. Because every time you choose it, you're adding energy to it, right? Which is the formulation of creation. When we add uh, energy to it, so like if you say, okay, you know, I'm choosing this and then that's your set point, whatever that life situation is, whether it's, you know, relationship, job or family or friends, um, you make that choice, right? Which is basically like an agreement, right? When you make that, you're making um, a choice with the universe to help like a, a signed contract by making the choice, basically, energetically, right? And then the universe then goes and starts bringing forward everything that you're wanting from that point, right? So it's an undocumented, because it's not physical, we're not actually signing it, but energetically, when we make a choice, that's what's happening, right? You can kind of relate to that. So <clears throat> from that point, um, whatever you make a choice on is what you're creating. So I've made this choice, and so from there, the seeds are planted, and so whatever is going to be needed for that to evolve is then going to be put to it, kind of like a plant when you're planting seeds, right? Whether it's a tree or flower or food. Um, and so with that, we can see it from that perspective. You know, what does the, the seed need? It needs sun, earth, it needs rain, you know. Um, and with, it's a little bit different as far as when we make choices, but that's, a, like I said, a great way to look at it. So when we make a choice, all these different components need to come for that to evolve. So, so if we were continually thinking about the choices that we made, we're adding energy to it. If we start getting into, because the more we think about it, our emotions start getting involved because it's a constant reminder, whatever that is, whether we want something or something that we did, you know, or something that we are wanting you know we are adding those emotions to it whether it's the you know oh i shouldn't have done that and you start getting emotional <laughs> you know because the more you think about it because your mind creates the emotions right as, as it continues to be thought of right and you can also relate this to uh, source in all its creation of all things right and the more it focused on it the more it created so it's a good alignment to kind of look at everything on a different perspective that way, um, on the macro and the micro. But in your life, what you're doing is with the seed, you're actually getting and gathering all the components and things will come up in your life that will steer you back to that choice that you made. Now, as you're constantly thinking about the choice that you made, again, whether it's the negative or the positive of it, something I want to create or something I shouldn't have done, 
it's going to be added to it, right? And so it's the adding on of it. So whatever it is from there, that point that our mind keeps going back to is going to create it, right? And so then the emotions get involved, right? The more we think about it. And then that's the emotion. That's like the engine. The energy of the vibration of the emotion is the engine that is taking form in place, right? And so then you have all these other conditions around you that are starting to take place to bring that into your fruition, right? Which is the budding and the flowering of the plant, whether it's the fruit or the flower. And as it keeps evolving, you're adding energy to it. It's going to expand and it's going to be created, right? And so that is creation, basically, kind of in that simulation for a reference. So when we get into the topic of like karma as our cycles and our looping and our patterns, it's only because something's unresolved. It has nothing to do with something that isn't resolved because when we're in a flow and alignment with everything, then everything just is. It's just flowing through, right? We don't have any looping back on it, you know, from that point of view, right? It's just a flowing. It's just a following of the path when we're in alignment, especially when a um, topic that this dropped in yesterday was when we were talking about our, our um, like our divine purpose, our path, and what we should be doing versus what we shouldn't be doing uh, because Right now is a great example <laughs> of the direction that we're going in or have been going in um, on the macro level, you know, as far as the governments and the rules and regulations and laws and what's going on and a lot of the shifting that's happening now. And so that was the conversation that came that brought this up. And when it dropped in, you know, they were saying it as karma, it's, it's our karma that this is happening. However, there's no karma. <laughs> there's no karma as far as that goes. So it's just a term that we give it. Um, and basically, it it's, doesn't really do it justice. So as far as karma, it doesn't exist because it doesn't exist on the other side, right? There's no punishment because we're all learning. We're all evolving. And so for Source to give punishment to something that it created, that it's learning, you know, is not going to happen. Right? That's only from our perspective. So I always try to take the word karma out of it because um, it actually doesn't exist. We created that um, because that's how we see it from that point of view. But the looping back is basically how I dropped in to share is it's a sign that we are off track, <laughs> right? It's not about punishment. It's not any of that. Um, because what happens, and I've talked about set points before, so you can always check that out. And so what happens is when we make decisions, it's a set point. And that brings in what I was talking about with the seeds, right? So from that point, it evolves, right? And so then from there, it is whatever is going to be, right? And so at some point, somebody had set into place our system of the government, and then it led to where we are now, right? And it's continually evolving. You know, we're making changes, uh, you know, as far as signing in new laws, regulations, things like that to go in a better direction, right? But that's also why we're seeing a lot of things uh, resurface, right? Because we need to take a look at it again. Um, it's unresolved, you know, for the best and the highest good, which is in alignment with source, love, right? And so from that point of view, we get to see it again as it loops back. Now this happens in your individual life as well on many different levels. And so it's the set point that doesn't align with love that loops back, right? Because if it's in alignment with love, it doesn't. It just exists and it just is and it just moves forward. It's only when we are out of alignment uh, with the direction or whatever it is that we're doing that we're creating loopbacks, right? So it's the arising of that so you can see it, right? Which is not karma, it's not punishment, because we can continue to live out something, you know, if we continue to not know about it, right? So it needs to be shown. And so the universe, the cycles are created in the path that are not aligned with love, that resurfaces so we can see it and then we can make change. And that goes back to the video when I was talking about the rise and fall of humanity, right, in consciousness. Um, so anytime we are out of alignment uh, with 
love, that's when we have the looping back, the cycles, which helps us to bring it up, you know, just, not just on the macro level, but the micro level, because that's, we're looking at what our stuff is and we want to be able to look at it so we can change it. And then if we don't change it, it gets more and more and more prevalent in our lives and in the macro level until we do do something about it. And you can actually see that happening in the macro level, which also helps or happens in your micro level world, right? Your individual life situations, right? And so we want to look at these things that keep circling back because that's what it's there for you. It's kind of like a sifter, if you will. So what they are showing and saying that like, if you're putting all these ingredients into the sifter, right? Like, and it kind of looks like a cone. You have all these ingredients going into it and then you have like a jar below or a bowl and you're sifting, right? It's going to sift out the stuff that's not in alignment with love and then everything that is, is going into the jar, right? And so as you're putting all these things into it, it's sifting, right? And just to kind of give you an idea of what that is, you know, as far as the universe working things out. And so that is looking at it, you know, as a the consciousness of how things work behind the scenes on an energetic level as an intelligence, right? And so it knows what's in alignment with love, right, from what isn't, right? And so that's the timelines, the um, streams of consciousness that I've talked about in other videos, right? And so it knows what is in alignment with source, right? And there, that has to go uh, before it can get to source. And But we're all headed in that direction, no matter where you are, which is why there's many paths, you know? And so from that point of view, that's how you can take a look at the looping back, right? It's not because you're being punished. It's so you can take a look at it again and make a different set point choice from that space that you're seeing it from, which can be different levels of awareness, right? And so it can be like a micro level, it could be a macro level. So every little choice and change that you take and make place of in that original set point uh, makes a big change in the universe, right? It evolves kind of like the game Othello. And I always go back to Othello because it's a great way to give you that perspective. If you know what the game of Othello is, it's trying to make all the pieces on the game board one color in whichever direction that we're going, right? And so from that point, every time we can make a choice closer to source, love, that's the direction that we're going. And then the more we do that, the more we uh, can speed up time, you know, from that point, because we're letting go of the stuff that doesn't hold us back, right? And so that gives you a good, was what they're saying, it gives you an, a good idea of where we are as a whole on the track in the universe back to source where we are when things are speeding up and time is no longer existing. It's where we can see ourselves, not just on an individual level, uh, it's more also what we're seeing on a macro level as a whole, right? Like a group. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, just a human version, but on different levels, right? So animals, plants, birds, trees, you name it, um, on that perspective. And so the more that we can, that time seems to be speeding, speeding up, right? It's becoming one with source, right? You know, how have the the lack or the resistance to what is not in alignment. Because if you have all these looping backs, right, it's slowing time down stuff, right? And so I don't want to really relate it to time, but it's there's no really way to really express it of what I'm trying and what they're showing me. Because like, if you think about it, on the other side, there's, and that goes into another video that I can probably do, but you know, there's no time on the other side, it's just concurrent. And so it's just one after the other, it w which looks displacent of where we are now because here we think there's time. And so if you look at speed of light, which is a good example, right? The speed of light, if you're traveling at the speed of light, you're going very fast, which you can use as a reference to source, right? It's just, right, you don't get a chance to look at it. but when we're making those set point choices, it's broken down into pieces like micro levels of snapshots within that 
speed of light, right? And so from the speed of light, it's just like, bam, right? Like you don't, you don't get to contemplate, you don't get to see it, you don't get to experience it so much as where, because it just is, it's just in the flow, it's just going, right? And so that's kind of more like source on the other side, right? That's that, but like when you have the slowing down instead of the quickening, right? It's the continuing of cycles and paths that we've created from set points that are in resistance to love, right? Because love just is and love just is. It just flows, right? And so when we've taken ourselves separate from it, we're creating these set points that are in resistance to it. And so we can't be one with it if we're separate from it, right? And so it's basically the slowing down of the speed of light into increments to see it from that perspective and that viewpoint, which is to learn from it, right? And to understand it to what hasn't already been worked out for certain parts of the consciousness, no matter what that is. And that's evolving, right? Towards source, which is the light from the darkness, the shadows, right? And so concurrent with that, it's in flow. The more that we can make those choices towards the light, right? And so that's healing letting go and the resolving of the issues and making different points and set points and choices um, more towards the light which is love and source right so concurrent with that it allows us to move forward more frequently and quickly towards that evolution and then when all that is done and resolved you are more in alignment with it and so it flows. And so basically that's kind of where they're saying like where time comes from. It's like the slowing down of the speed of light, which is the increments that it's being. It's kind of like the slowing down of the speed of light is what they're sharing. And then so that's where we can see it and make changes to evolve from it uh, through that evolution of what is already existing right everything that has already been created uh for us to see from it and to learn from it and to evolve from it within ourselves right which is our own creations right which whatever we're taking up and putting down from lifetime to lifetime working on this working on that and you know playing this part in this role in our lives on the macro and then the, the micro also it's whatever is they are throwing in whatever is like on the, the macro, it, you can pretty much see within your life and whatever is within your life you're adding to the macro, right? And so you can see it interchangeably, um, what that is, right? But of course, you know, the collective, you know, is where you're seeing everything as a whole outside of you. The collective would be, be like all of humanity or human race, right? Or the collectiveness is would be like in your individual life, you know, your environments, right? So who are you hanging out with? What is your tribe? You know, that's the collective. But you have a lot of different levels of awareness going on at the same time, but you can use it universally. You know, I'm adding to this because this is where we are as a whole, right? And so what is my put into the evolution of the world? How am I being? How am I showing up in the world? But for me to be a good player in evolution of for all, you have to be here first. So that's where they say you always turn in, always do your self work, do make yourself change, right? So if you are on the game of Othello and you're one of those pieces, you know, you want to work on yourself and then that affects the rest of the board, right? So change takes place and a lot of yogis, you know, be the change in the world. Um, Gandhi, right? Uh, he had brought that to everybody's attention, right? And so that's basically what it is like when, you know, you're working on yourself and then you're showing up and then you're changing the outside world. You're adding to it from that point of view, which is the perspective of source from the point of love and being what and how you're being in the world. If you're choosing to not be, then of course you're going to add that to, to the world. And that's the influence of the whole collective that we're seeing on the macro and what's going on in the shift in consciousness and awareness, right? And so as we're all moving towards the light source, the higher consciousness um, that changes. And so that's in increments, you know, little bits and pieces of changes 
which you can see in the macro nose curve, you're going to use the example, the, um, I, don't, I don't want to say like the religion, but more of like the government as they're changing the laws and regulations, you know, manipulating things and changing it. Um, that's kind of like, so you change this and you change that and you change this. It's kind of like putting your hands in the clay and molding it and playing around with it and see what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, we're all in, in you know, the game here, we're all playing and learning and see what, what is, what is the love, you know? And so what is good for us? What isn't good for us? What helps? It's playing, it's learning, it's evolving. That's why there's no punishment, right? And although we get mad and angry and hate it, hateful um, because things don't go our way, we have to make ourselves the way before we can make anything outside of ourselves the way we want it, right? And so that's the change within to be the change without, which is adding to the collective. You're adding your energy to the collective, even though you don't have an intention or understanding it, but you, because everybody has a part and role in it, everybody's important and has a piece that they're adding to the puzzle, right? And as we're adding to it, we're either moving towards source or moving away from source, right? And so everybody part is important to do your own work, to do your own healing, to do your own awareness, right? Turning in, meditating, healthy behaviors, um, working through your stuff of what maybe you've worked, have come in to do and be in alignment with what your soul's wanting to do or what it is that you feel your purpose is, right? And that helps bring the change for the universe, which is also the, it's getting hot out, um, <laughs> uh, which is the collective, right? Um, and so when we can do that and add to it, we are actually speeding up time again, which is the rise. And so we're rising. There's less things that are keeping us separate, less things that are keeping us um, slow down in evolution. You know, you take a look at how long each age was existing for, like the, the dark ages, this age, this time frame, this time frame. And the more that we go towards the collective of source in alignment, the more that we have the time speeding up, which then collapses time, right? If that makes sense. Time is only created if you have separation. It's a little increments. Um, of what we're choosing on the timeline, which is a set point that we're going to end up living out, which is the seeds that are planted. And from that point, we are evolving on that timeline. And so when all timelines can coexist as one, then we can all come together and time no longer exists, which is the collapsing of itself. So hopefully that helps. Um, and just going back to, you know, the loops, the loops are just, you know, when we're not in alignment with love, which is source, right? And it's just the understanding and knowing who we are evolving um, and the choice that we make. We all make choices, at, you know, during, throughout our lifetimes. Not always everything is in alignment with love, but everything is for love. Um, and so for everything that isn't, there's a backup, right? And I want to see if I can find that here real quick for you, because uh, this was part of the writing also that I decided to sit down and do a little channeling here on it. So I'm just going to read this quick little part here, um, and what it said about that. It says, so as the set point, which is the choice that we all make, regardless of what, whatever that choice is, um, until you change it, right? And so the cycle and the looping back will come back around until you are seeing it so you can make another choice because you can't make a choice on anything until you actually see it and you're aware of it, right? So because if you're not aware of something, you can't make a different choice until it becomes in your awareness. And so as I went through my awakening and stuff like that and healing certain situations, these things came to my awareness of what I was doing without even realizing I was doing it. That's the unconscious and the consciousness. The consciousness is presenting itself to you that's in the unawareness of itself which is creating the loops, right? Because when we have the unconsciousness, um, it has to be um, seen, right? In order for you to make a different choice for whatever choice you make at the set point and you live that out unconsciously, right? Because you, a lot of times we don't even realize, oh, you know, I'm making this choice and then unconsciously we don't know. And I've had, I, I can use this as an example, you know, I've made a lot of choices in my life with, um, without really thinking about it and contemplating it and kind of just making a choice and then end up 
the, when a place that I don't want to be, <laughs> you know, because I haven't really, un I'm unconsciously made choices, right? So, and then at that point, it, it, consciousness is showing you, it loops back to, okay, here is where you are now. Are you going to still make that same choice based on where you are and having known what choice you made before so you can change it, right? And so consciousness is aware of itself making choices and changes as it's going through the timeline that's creating these looping back, which is slowing down the time frame that we are actually living in it, right? And when we can bring it back to an alignment with source on all levels, then speeding up the time then creates the collapsing of it. The time shifts and goes, it collapse, right? It just goes more in alignment with source. It's kind of like friction and resistance, right? You can't keep up with source in that time frame, which is a separation and the drip downs of information that we have, you know, here, um, because it's not moving at the time and the rates of source, right? It's the slowing down of time. So that's why we have time. It's like a lag, right? So it's not really time as we, because of course we're like living, we can experience it like in 3D, but I'm not relating to like time, like on the clock, right? Because it's, it's just existing at a slower rate of speed than when it would if we were in alignment with source, which is love, right? And so basically that's what I'm referring to as time, not the clock, right? Because that is, that's man-made, um, obviously. So you can be to work at time um, <laughs> and all your appointments. But so it says here, it's set in place, set point until you change it, right? Which is to make it awareness. So bring the unconscious into the awareness of what it is that's not being in alignment with love so you can change it so it's in alignment with love, right? Which is a stream of consciousness. So it is that which is called being a cycle in your life, the waves, right? And so it's actually the waves. It's the ups and downs, the ups and flows. The, it's, it's, we call it cycles and patterns and looping, um, but it's actually considered waves from the other side of what is called karma, what we call karma. And that is the coming back around, the looping that we call looping. Um, back around for you to see it to make another choice, which is to create a new cycle, <clears throat> which is in alignment with source, which isn't called a set point. So when we have the set point, um, we're making choices, we have the set point. So from there, because this universe serves us, what brings us what we are creating and what we're doing and what we're choosing, it then is set in motion. And I kind of talked about that towards the beginning of the video from, and that is called the set point or from the set point you live life, right? So from whatever choice you make, you live that, right? And so in the unconscious until you become aware of it, which is in a future existence, because for whatever choice you make it, as you live it, you are now in a different place, which is the present moment. From there, now, if when it loops back for you to see it, are you still gonna make that same choice that you made before? If yes, then you continue into another loop which is bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It keeps growing until you choose it, which is more suffering, more suffering, more suffering. But if we choose a no, I choose love from that set point. Now that you see it from what you used to choose, it changes it into the timeline of love, which is more in line with source. And so it just flows, right? And so it's getting rid of all the resistance from ourselves, which is the shadow aspects and the things that we're choosing that aren't in line with love, right? And it's getting rid of, all, rid of all those aspects of ourselves, right? On the timeline. So we can be in flow with love, right? And back to source. Um, and what it is that you are choosing creates it to that which is formulated in being the love or not of love, the bliss or suffering of it, which is the light of itself. Love for all is for love, even when it isn't being love. The choice that you make is in the name of love which is the backup plan. So you're either being in love, what it show, it goes on to say, that which I intended and that which I didn't intend in creation of it to be, which is the resistance, which is being love and that which isn't being love is that which is the backup plan. So I'm either being love or I am not, which is the light or the darkness, the shadows of love. So basically it's saying that, um, so the backup plan is you're either, it's either in the name of love or it is being love. So those are the only two that it's relating uh, through the channeling uh, that you're either 
in the name of love, which is the suffering, or it is love itself, because those are the only two that you can be. It's either in the name of love, your suffering is in the name of love, right? So in the name of love is to, you're not actually being love itself, which is alignment with source, but you're in the name of love. So you're doing it for the purpose of love, which is to change it, right? Because everything is for you, nothing is ever against you, right? And so sometimes our suffering comes because of love, right? Sometimes we need that hard love, <laughs> you know, to make the right choices. And that's the suffering that we're creating because we've made it a wrong choice. And I won't really say wrong, but, you know, we made a choice that we're going to learn from. So basically, um, that's pretty much the gist of it. So that's the backup plan for being love. If you're not love, then you're in the name of love, right? So because all is love. So just how it's, it's worded and put here, you know, for this channeling. And that's just a little clip um, in that. But that's basically the loops, you know, the, the cycles and the patterns. Um, it's the slowing down of time, creating time that we're existing and we're living in it and living that out so we can kind of look at it and see it and understand it. Um, because at the end of the day, it's about awareness, consciousness, right? And then when we are in a different place, having had the experience, are we going to continue to choose it? Or are we going to change it? Which is the micro and the macro level, interchangeable. All right, hopefully that helps. Wanted to drop that in. Um, I was guided to kind of talk about that. I was jotting it down. <laughs> um, so, all right, if you have any questions, um, definitely reach out. And hopefully you check out the other videos because it all kind of helps. It. It's all piecing it together and different things. And I do have a Patreon that I'm going to start posting everything on as far as the channel writing. So you can uh, read them if you want or contemplate them. I'm signing up to that uh, Patreon account, which is also going to be linked below. I do one-to-one -one sessions if you do want to do some self-work and um, a life review working on transforming your life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.